He was most recently the founding managing director of the Norwegian Microfinance Initiative, the NMI. And before joining the NMI, Richard was the executive secretary of the United Nations Capital Development Fund, the USPDF. It's certainly an honor to be here, and I'd like to welcome you all to the Summary of Social Enterprise Recognition and Regional Summit, which is presented by Sun Health and Intellica. I'd also especially like to thank our partners and colleagues at the DFID, Dippet from the UK, as well as GIZ from uh, Germany, without whose support this event would certainly not be possible. In addition, I'd like to extend our thanks to our colleagues at Sunreading, the Social Venture Fund, which is managed by Sydney Venture Capital, and which, and which was launched with contributions from DFID and Sydney to invest in pro core enterprises in the eight low income states. Um, Suncult, as you can see uh, from the materials here, is an initiative of IntelliCap. In part, IntelliCap organized a conference working closely with Apu and her team from Suncult. But IntelliCap itself is very focused on social enterprises all around the world. Our mission is to build and scale profitable and sustainable enterprises that are dedicated to social and environmental change. We do this by providing investment banking, consulting, and knowledge services to enterprises, to entrepreneurs, to development finance institutions, to investors, to corporations, to policymakers, and we work closely with academia in many circumstances. All of our activities focus on reaching people at the bottom of the pyramid, the poorest people around the world, and particularly in India, that is our main area of emphasis. We generally work in six focus sectors, which are health, education, financial inclusion, water and sanitation, agriculture, and energy. Now, why, one might ask, are we so focused today on low income states. Why has this initiative been begun by all of us uh, collectively? Why are we focused on the low income states? I think it's important to set the context for the discussions that we're going to have um, today. And I think we need to look at that context at two levels. First is the macro level, the overall economic and social uh, aspects of what's happening in the low income states. And then at the micro level, at the enterprise level, with respect to social enterprise, and see if there's some conclusions we can draw that set context for all the discussions that we're going to have. From the macro level, I think there's several very salient points about the low income states that need to be thought about as we work together over the next day and on into the future. First, the low income states, again, Bihar, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, Madhya Pradesh, Orissa, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, West Bengal. Together, these states have 53% of India's population, about 636 million people. But in these same states, the total economic activity is only responsible for about 29% of India's total, which indicates that these states are uh, among the least productive of Indian states, and there's a significant improvement that can be made to bring them to the levels of the rest of India. In addition, poverty in these states is the highest amongst all the Indian states. About 68% of all the poor people in India live in the low-income states, and that's about 421 million people who live in the low-income states. Next, from a per capita income point of view, the low income states are lagging fairly far behind the rest of India, where the uh, average per capita income is about 60,000 uh, rupees. Bihar, for example, the average income is about 24,000 rupees compared to 60. 
So in the low-income states, again, there's significant room for improvement. Further, the low-income states are largely rural. About 70% of their populations uh, live in rural areas. Agriculture is the predominant uh, livelihood. Many of the states and people in the states don't have access to electricity. These are the states that have the least access to electricity across the country. The result is that many of the improvements that we've seen in other parts of India haven't gotten the low-income states uh, as, as yet. Further, from a human development point of view, the recent Human Development Index indicates that the low-income states are at the bottom of, of all the states. They are, of the 12 lowest states, seven of them are the low-income states. And that means the literacy rates are well below the national average, life expectancy at birth is well below the national average, and generally, from a social point of view, there's a lot of work that needs to be done you know, in the low-income states. From a financial inclusion point of view, again, a very important uh, indicator of uh, social development. The low-income states are, again, amongst the lowest across India in access to financial services. Indeed, where the uh, index for financial inclusion in Kerala, for example, is at 0.5, it's at half of that level for the low-income states. So there's a significant amount of improvement that can be made uh, in financial inclusion. And another important measure of, of the, the significant needs here is in the low-income states, the credit gap, which refers to the amount of lending money that would be required to meet the needs of medium and small enterprises, it's actually micro, small, and medium enterprises, the amount of capital that would be required to meet the borrowing requirements of those entities is about 193,000 if you can all do that math, that ends up being about 2 trillion rupees. So there's a huge unmet demand from small and medium-sized enterprises for credit. Now at the micro level, when we look at the micro level, what do we see? The micro level, IntelliCap did a study recently on the path to sustainability and scale, and we looked at about 100 social enterprises across India. What we found was 57 of those enterprises had some operations in the low-income states. So they were functioning here. About 60% of them were functioning someplace. They had some sort of a nexus or activity here. But only 13% of them had headquarters here, which tells you that the enterprises that are grown here, that are raised here, that are housed here, are very, very few compared to what else is happening in India. And in addition, the ones that were housed here, that, that grew up here, were very small in scale and were very new. They had only begun their operations in the last five or six years. Further, when we looked at what types of sectors were these enterprises working in, we found that there was a large number of enterprises working in agriculture and a large number working in energy and some in livelihood development, but almost none, only two, for example, in sanitation, very, very few in health, only five, you know, out, out, of the, out, of, out of the total. And we also found that there was great variability among states. So there was a fair amount of activity in uh, Rajasthan and in Orissa, but very, very limited amount of activity in Chhattisgarh, for example, or Jharkhand. So very, very significant differences among the states. And also, when you add up all those numbers, you ended up with 53 you know, enterprises. And when you put that in the scope of India as a whole, it's a very, very, very low level of activity. Very low level of activity. As a result, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. What would you conclude from this? I would suggest several conclusions. One, there are very few examples of scalable social enterprises that are coming from the low-income states, even though the needs are significant, both on the economic side and on the social side. While good work is being done, it's clearly not enough. There's a lot of room for additional uh, work. Secondly, I would conclude that the social enterprise and impact investing markets are much less developed in the low-income states than they are in other parts of the year. So there's a lot of catching up uh, to do. Third, I would say it is of critical importance for the low-income states to build these types of enterprises. They deal with social issues, they have high social and environmental impact, 
they generate jobs, and they can be significant contributors to the overall economic and social well-being of people in the state. So this is an area that requires a lot of focus, and there's a lot of work to be done. You then might ask from there, well, what's the problem? Why isn't this happening here? You know, why are we behind? Why do we not have so many enterprises? And I think when you look at that, there are several factors that are not as prominent in the low-income states as they are in other states. First, there's a lack of access to information. People don't know, you know, how to set up a social enterprise. They don't know how to find funding. They don't know how to be in touch with an incubator. Second, financing. How do you get venture capital financing? How do you get early stage capital? How do you get angel uh, investment? How do you get bank loans? The knowledge of this uh, type of financing and knowing where to go to get financing is lower here than in some other parts of India. Next, capacity building. How do you build a management team? How do you find people that can help to run your company? How do you learn specific skills if you need to learn about financing or marketing or um, uh, HR you know, policies? There's a lot of capacity building can be done here. In addition, peer learning. There are not very good networks here for sharing among peers. People who have been successful or who are learning can learn from others who have done it in the past who are also learning themselves. In addition, there isn't an active network in which peers can find a place to share with each other as well as meet with mentors and uh, providers of capital. There isn't as well established network infrastructure as there is in other parts of India. As a result, we hope that the Santal Samriti Initiative, at which we're uh, you know, undertaking and, uh, today and at which you'll be spending time throughout the rest of the day, is going to do six basic things that should help to begin a process of addressing these problems. And I emphasize begin, because this is a long-term developmental process. It takes a long time to build businesses like this. So we hope that today's event will be the first of many that we'll have in Bihar, and hopefully in other places in the lower-income states. But the objectives, when you say, what is it we would like to accomplish through this type of activity, I would basically say there are six. First, you want to build greater awareness about social enterprise and among social entrepreneurs. Second, you want to locate and identify new social enterprises, new entrepreneurs who are looking to do things and provide a support environment for them. Third, you want to increase investor awareness and the presence of investors in these markets so they become more engaged in the low-income states. Fourth, we want to increase the policy understanding for social enterprise amongst the governments of these states. The policy environment is very, very important, and a lot of work needs to be done in low-income states to encourage these enterprises. Uh, fifth, we want to be sure that the media understands social enterprise and what the different types of social uh, investors um, are and what this activity is all about. So it's not confused necessarily with not-for-profit organizations, because this is not necessarily not-for-profit you know, activity, and how it has a social impact is a very important discussion. And the last point is capacity building. Building capacity across entrepreneurs, investors, policymakers to be able to function effectively within this space. So that's what the day is going, to, is going to be about. It's an opportunity for entrepreneurs to meet each other, present their ideas, meet with uh, investors, learn to interact, showcase their businesses, uh, you know, re learn about and share different models. It's a space for investors to come together to look at some of the challenges in the low-income states, look at ways that they can provide capital to enterprises uh, here, and it's also a place for others in the sector to look at the issues and challenges of building social enterprises in the low-income states in India. My main message uh, here again is I think this is a great start, and we're very grateful to our colleagues at GIZ and DIPID uh, and SIDBI for uh, helping us to put this together. But again, it's a long-term effort, requires a lot of attention, a lot of work from a lot of people to have a real impact here over the years, and we hope that this will be uh, a very good first step. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.